Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar to introduce a new LS spectrometer. My name is Dario and I'm the CEO of LS Instruments and after more than two years of development it is a huge honor for me to open this event on behalf of the whole company. A big thanks to the whole development team to make this happen and to the rest of the company. This webinar is organized as an interactive event and I encourage you to submit any questions that you might have during uh, the event by using the chat. We will have a Q&A session at the end of this webinar and we will try to address most of the questions that you have. Also, I would like to mention that we will be recording this webinar. So in case you miss a section or in case you are interested in reviewing a section or in case a colleague of yours uh, is interested in, uh, to see uh, the recordings, we will make it available on our website. Also the transcript of the Q&A session. So I will start with a short general introduction and I will hand over to Colleen Bretz, our head of sales afterwards. She will present uh, the new features of the LS spectrometer, of the new LS spectrometer. And uh, we will conclude uh, the presentation part with a presentation of the new features of the LS Lab software, especially with a focus on the SLS data treatment suits. This will be uh, guided by Andrea Vaccaro, the CTO of our company. Overall, we believe to be within 30 and 45 minutes, uh, excluding the Q&A, which we will have right after. A short introduction to LS Instruments. LS Instruments AG was founded in 2010 as a spin-off of the University of Fribourg in Switzerland by the two physics uh, professors and uh, specialized in colloidal uh, systems, Peter Schurtenberger and Frank Scheffold. The driving force uh, to, for the foundation of LS Instruments was the lack of reliable solutions for characterizing complex and concentrated colloidal systems. And this led to the development of a next generation of light scattering technology on which LS Instruments is built. Today's launch of the new LS spectrometer somehow closes a circle in the history of LS Instruments and for us means back to the roots. LS Instruments started with the LS spectrometer, which back then and uh, even uh, today is the most advanced light scattering instrument available on the market. As we have heard from many scientists uh, for many times over the years, when it comes to the hard nuts in colloidal science, uh, they will rely on the LS spectrometer to tackle those challenges. In 2015, with the launch of the DWS Rio Lab, and thereafter in 2016, with the launch of the NanoLab 3D, uh, the correlator and the software platform LS Lab, LS Instruments started to address customers outside of the light scattering community. With increasing product portfolio and also with the increasing customer base uh, throughout the world, last year in 2022, LS Instruments opened its first subsidiary in the United States in the LA region. Since then, we are closer to our customers in North America. And today, as I mentioned before, somehow the circle closes uh, with the launch of the new LS spectrometer. We've realized in the recent years uh, and come to the conclusion that the LS spectrometer must be, uh, must be made available also to researchers outside of the light scattering community. In particular, the increasing demand from the pharmaceutical sector has strengthened our conviction that there is an unmet need in the industry for the characterization of complex nanosystems, especially in the context of new drugs in the field of cell and gene therapy. Thus, in a sense, as I mentioned, we close the cycle today with the presentation of the new LS spectrometer. As I mentioned before, since last year, we also have an office in California. Um, whenever you have questions related to our products, feel free to get in touch with our local representatives. We have a network of over 18 distributors uh, around the world 
So in case you have questions after today's meeting uh, or in general you have questions related to our products, feel free to get in touch with our local uh, partners. You will find an elusive list of uh, the contacts on our website. Yes, so having said this, uh, I'm more than happy to hand over to Colleen and to launch uh, the presentation of the new LS spectrometer. Thank you very much, uh, Dario, and it's a great honor for me to guide you through today through all the features of the new um, LS spectrometer. And before mentioning even the new LS spectrometer, I would like to spend some time and talk about um, the legacy um, of the LS spectrometer. So many of you uh, present here today know the LS spectrometer as the most advanced analytical platform, high precision solution to characterize complex codal systems or even standard ones. So it is basically the most advanced DLS and SLS instruments available to researchers today on the market. Um, it enables full colloidal characterization of systems from standard to highly complex and has been already adopted by many researchers at top 200 universities and global uh, companies. As you can see, this instrument is a goniometer based system with a detection unit that can rotate around the sample chamber reaching any angle between 12 degrees and 150 degrees. The legacy of the LF spectrometer also involves um, this open design, which sometimes required um, laser curtains installation on an optical table. As of today, we are proud to announce that while keeping all the analytical capabilities, we have um, reduced these restrictions and are now offering a full robust benchtop product without compromising any of the power that the instrument offers. So as you can see here um, today, we, are, we have now here this closed design for the LS spectrometer, which enables laser product plus one. It's a full benchtop design, which means that the instrument does not require installation on any specific equipment and any standard lab bench can be used for installation. Andrea Vaccaro, our CTO, will later guide you through the full software suite that has now been enabled um, together with the instrument. And um, to also mention that we have improved the uh, rapidity of the alignment and the robustness of this um, alignment. This instrument, as of today, is available uh, for purchase at LS Instruments and replaces um, the legacy version of the LS spectrometer. I have mentioned the powerful aspect of the LS spectrometer, the fact that one can characterize any type of colloidal system, no matter what the concentration or type of particles we are dealing with. And so in terms of parameters, this instrument basically characterizes the size of particles, their shape, the polydispersity of uh, highly complex samples, molecular weight, stability in terms of colloids, kinetics of aggregation, the structure of a sample, the interactions between particles, and also to some extent the viscosity and viscoelasticity of liquids or gel-like samples. This basically summarizes the, the power that one can reach with this instrument. And it's also, as I will mention a bit later, a very versatile solution that can be employed in many different ways and is also configurable, configurable to the needs of the um, researcher. So characterizing the most complex systems. Here I would like to spend a bit of time to just mention a few examples according to the main industries that we serve on top of um, the academic industry. In the life science fields, uh, people typically use the LS spectrometer to conduct sizing, detection of aggregates, viscometry, and general colloidal stability assessments of samples such as protein, monoclonal antibodies, um, and also on nanocarriers such as virus-like uh, type particles like AAVs, and also carriers like lipid nanoparticles. In the sector of specialty chemicals and advanced materials, we're typically looking at um, inks that would serve to uh, conduct 3D printing or bioprinting. And one can also, of course, characterize any system from polymers to resins, nanoparticles, and gel-like uh, samples, inorganic and organic nanoparticles as well. In the food and beverage field, the LS spectrometer is typically employed due to the ability of suppressing multiple light scattering and accessing highly concentrated system is used to conduct uh, particle sizing in milk and plant-based milk and other products, as well as conducting characterization of protein 
uh, made samples and looking at the structure of these uh, food samples. In the personal care fields, we would typically um, use this instrument to conduct formulation stability, aging uh, studies, and also monitoring of processes in emulsions and surfactant uh, systems. This is, of course, only a small overview at what the instrument can do. Um, and in the next part, I would like to detail a little bit more what features are offered in this instrument. The first of which is the capability to perform dynamic and static light scattering at any angle. And this is basically this variable multi-angle light scattering solution, which we call VMALS. This is relevant when one wants to characterize complex systems. Because when we are looking at a complex system, which would typically be constituted of different particle size populations, it is important that we are able to assess exactly which particle populations are present in a sample. So in this cartoon example here, you would see that there is uh, typically a main population made of individual particles and also some aggregates, agglomerates, or any other type of additional population present in the sample. Depending on the system, sometimes these uh, populations may be very close to one another in size, and not every solution will be able to differentiate between these two particle population peaks. To optimally distinguish between two peaks, one must employ a combination of an appropriate fitting algorithm and um, this variability on the measurement angle. This is what I would like to talk about in the next uh, slides. So this VMALS capability basically enables us to um, vary the angle of the detection unit, again, between 12 degrees and 150 degrees. And this is important when we're looking at poorly dispersed systems, because in light scattering, we typically see that larger particles tend to scatter more light towards smaller angles. They will be thus more visible at smaller angles. So when we want to characterize larger aggregates, this is where we're going to basically place our gonometer system at a low angle to have increased sensitivity. When we move the goniometer to the larger um, angles, we are then able to resolve better the particles that have a uh, smaller size. And this is what you can see here with this variation of the particle size population according to the angle that is measured. So one can um, improve the sensitivity of the instruments by varying uh, the angle. The VMALS technique is also used to characterize particle shape. One can do so using static light scattering by determination of the form factor. And one can also use depolarized light scattering by introducing polarizers into the system, which is an option that we have um, available. With this, one can characterize dense, uh, dense spheres, hollow spheres, fully loaded or unloaded carriers, uh, like AAV capsids, functionalized particles or anisotropic particles that I would be, for example, ellipsoidally um, shaped. I would like also to mention this data treatment that we have developed. Um, here, the importance of the data treatment comes when we are looking at complex systems. So let's take the example of a suspension in which we have smaller particles, larger particles, and even larger occasional aggregates. So sensitivity here means, again, that we are able to look at every particle population present in a sample and that all the peaks will then be displayed in the result, which is our particle size distribution. We have developed the Coren algorithm to uh, basically cope with the drawbacks of algorithms typically present available on the market. And since 2019, we're proud to offer this as part of our um, DLS characterization. And this has been now fully enabled in the LS spectrometer software, Suit LS Lab. None the least when it comes to the power of the LS spectrometer is the ability to conduct dilution-free measurements. And here I would like to spend some more time um, just mentioning the modulated 3D technology to perform accurate sizing at any concentration uh, measurable. This has been, so to say, the flagship of LS instruments since the creation of the company. Here, um, the story is that when we are looking at different types of sample, we might be looking at highly dilute sample or highly concentrated sample. No matter what the concentration we're looking at, we would want to be able to investigate this type of systems accurately. However, 
we know that when we are dealing with highly concentrated uh, systems, we would typically see multiple light scattering arising from the signal coming from this type of samples. And multiple scattering basically generates errors in the results that we are going to obtain. So in the current way that standard DLS is performed, there's no way to identify such errors. With the modulated 3D technology, we have um, we are offering a solution to remove completely multiple light scattering from the signal. And at the same time, we're also offering through the sample goniometer option in the LS spectrometer, a way to reduce multiple light scattering before it is ultimately suppressed by the technology. And this is done by translating the cuvettes and measuring the sample in the corner position of the cuvettes. Here, it's really important to, un to understand one aspect of DLS and SLS is that when we are using standard DLS, so an, an instrument that's not equipped with this modulated 3D technology, we're going to basically send a signal into the sample that might contain multiple scattering, depending on which concentration one works with. In a standard DLS instrument, this multiple scattering effects will be present in the results that we are wanting to analyze and they will then constitute undetectable and systematic measurement errors. So when we look at the, the range of concentration that we can analyze in a secure manner, this is extremely limited and it's also not often easy to state what is the highest concentration measurable without obtaining such errors. So it is essentially an unreliable way to conduct DLS and SLS characterization. When we work with the moderated 3D technique, we are feeding into the instrument a scattering signal that may also contain multiple scattering. But in this case, the um, technology is such that the multiple scattering events will be completely filtered out of the signal, which then guarantees error-free uh, measurements. So one can then measure samples with the peace of mind of knowing that whatever concentration we are uh, dealing with, there will never be measurement errors to consider. And so, in a sense, we are then able to characterize the full range of concentration that we would want to consider for our uh, samples, even the most uh, complex ones. I would like to conclude this part dedicating to the technology and the features um, to talk a little bit about the configuration that we offer with our instruments. The LS spectrometer comes in two uh, versions. One is the basic configuration and the other one is the full configuration. In both the basic configuration and the full configuration, we are, of course, offering the LS spectrometer with all its VMILS capability. We're also offering temperature control over the sample. So the temperature can be adjusted to a single uh, value and can also be varied using a protocol that Andrea will um, showcase later on. In both cases, we're also offering our full software suite, which comprises the Coren fitting algorithm for advanced data fitting. In the case of the full configuration, we are enabling this modulated 3D technology to uh, work on the full concentration range uh, measurable. We are also allowing non-ergodic DLS. This is conducted using the sample goniometer. And as I mentioned before, with the sample goniometer, one can also translate the sample to reduce multiple scattering events. Finally, in the full configuration, we are inserting polarizers to conduct depolarized DLS and characterize anisotropic samples. So these two configurations make it a um, versatile instrument that can be um, decided according to the kind of research project that one might want to conduct. And now for the next part, I would like to hand it over to Andrea Vaccaro, our CTO, for the software uh, presentation parts. Hello, everybody. In this part, I will uh, illustrate you uh, the software LS Lab. And um, LS Lab uh, is a software that we have uh, developed and introduced starting in uh, 2013. And uh, we have developed LS Lab with the idea of offering a user friendly uh, software able to drive uh, the whole portfolio of instruments uh, marketed and sold uh, by LS Instruments. Our intention was that of um, making it easy. Uh, we have focused on, uh, on developing a user-friendly software for, uh, for our um, uh, customers, and we have focused on 
on uh, um, on tasks. So as you can see here, the welcome screen is focused on on tiles. Each tiles uh, is corresponds to a task that a user would like to to run. So um, uh, for example, we have the first tile, which is DL sizing, which allows us to uh, do uh, measurements. The second for viscosymmetry. Then we can browse experiments. Then we can create protocols and run protocols. As you can see, there is uh, tiles that are related to the generation and acquisition of uh, light scattering data. And there is one main tile that is related to the analysis and, uh, uh, and inspection of the acquired data. Let's uh, focus on this uh, uh, in advance. So um, uh, here we see that, uh, uh, that we, we wanted to uh, um, follow the idea of a lab book for that uh, an experimentalist would uh, maintain during an experimental activity. And how does an experimentalist uh, uh, maintain? He does experiments, and experiments are collection of measurements. And as you can see here in the first column, we have a collection of experiments. And then those experiments contain a collection of measurements that you see in the second column. So let's start from selecting a first experiment. And these experiments contain, for example, an angle dependent measurement on a certain particle system. And let's see what is the visualization that we, uh, the general purpose visualization that we give to the user. We give, for example, the ability to show the hydrodynamic radius versus measured versus time and the intercept of the correlation function versus time. But let's assume that the user is not finding this interesting, but in this case, he wants to see the hydrodynamic radius as a function of uh, the angle, and he wants to see the intensity as a function of the angle. And already here, the user is able to see that most likely this is a sample that has a not so many dispersed and it might contain uh, some uh, impurities or some aggregates. And in this moment, he wants to expect, inspect more into detail the, uh, uh, the first measurement that seems to be the one more affected and is the one ran at the smallest angle. And he can, at this moment, start to visualize details about a single measurement contained in this experiment. And he can, uh, this user can uh, appreciate the aerodynamic uh, radius as a function of the repetition because, because each measurement is a collection of repetition that you see uh, shown on the right. Um, <clears throat> And on the left uh, plot, we can see the hydrodynamic radius as a function of repetition number. And on the second plot, you can see uh, the uh, uh, intensity as a function of the uh, repetition number. And this, again, gives more insight to the user because he can single out outliers, he can find problematic measurement, and he can work on them. And let's assume now that the uh, user is interested in the third repetition and he wants to get more detail about how, for example, it was uh, not a good measurement or how it is a good measurement. And so he can select a single repetition and he can say and analyze the uh, cumulant fit results. Indeed, in the first tab selected, we can see the fit range, we can see the result, we can see the, what is the policy dispersity index, and we can see what was the intercept. Then if the user is interested in also in, in getting even more detail from the particle size distribution, the current uh, tool is the current that will deliver this information. So by selecting it, we, on the left graph, we can see the particle size distribution. And on the right graph, we can see how is good the fit uh, obtained by the current algorithm. And we can already see the current was able actually to single out uh, two peaks, a first peak that is the peak of interest, and a second peak that most likely is the result of some aggregate or some contamination. L low, uh, uh, below the graph of the particle size distribution, we can see um, uh, the peaks that uh, uh, are uh, um, singled out. And they can, you, we can see the relative amount, the average size, and each coefficient of, of variation. Uh, the user can also decide a different weighting of the particle size distribution. And normally, many particle uh, analysis uh, 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 experts prefer to plot data as a, a function of 
uh, as a volume weighted because these uh, the yields resulted are more comparable with other sizing technique and here you, we can see that actually as expected the lower the smaller peak gets more larger uh, because we are not intensity weighting anymore our results the uh, if the uh, particle uh, sizing expert wants also to see a cumulative distribution uh, to um, uh, to appreciate where is the D90, uh, he can also show a cumulative uh, distribution. Now, getting back to our data, let's uh, assume that uh, we have done measurements that are more complex. Let's assume that the scientist here wanted to do uh, a, a measurement, a light scattering measurement that uh, to assess the molar, molar mass of the sample, the radius of duration, and the um, second view of coefficient. In this case, the, uh, we, uh, the site is going to do a SIM analysis, and this SIM analysis entails angle dependent measurement at several concentrations. In this case, the experiment is becoming a collection of many different experiments that is difficult to visualize in. Uh, uh, with the default visualization. That is why for the spectrometer, the new spectrometer, uh, we specialized and we enhanced as a as lab software to allow to add data treatments. And I want to show you what a data treatment is. In this case, we add, we want to add a data treatment and the software behind the curtain is uh, as an intelligence that analyzes the data and sees that the data is compatible with a SIM plot data treatment. And then we add a SIM plot and we are asked to enter what a name of our data treatment. So we know that we made some measurements on polystyrene and we know that we are going to do a SIM. Then the intelligence behind the current uh, found out that there are two materials used in this experimental campaign. One is polystyrene and one polyethylene. And we select polystyrene. And he also finds out that we ran four uh, 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 angle dependent measurements at four different mass concentrations. So we start to select each one of them. And since we know that the seam plot can be done on, at least on three repetitions, the apply. Uh, button is enabled only at the moment in which we select at least three concentrations. And we add the last concentration, we click apply. Then the software is going to do a computation uh, behind the curtain. And he is going to show us a new sub element, which is a data analysis. And as you can see, the data analysis will show in one single shot without tedious uh, uh, data selection at SIM plot. Now let's have a look what the SIM plot analysis is yielding. First of all, this is to our knowledge, the first SIM commercial SIM plot, SIM plot null that, uh, tool that does a global fit of our all the data series. Uh, by not, and not doing a single linear fit of each series, a single fit of each series. This enhances greatly the uh, the accuracy and uh, the, the analysis yielding the molar mass, the radius of duration, and the second viewer coefficient. Now, if the cast is the, uh, the, the, the user is an expert user and he knows how to treat the data, he is given the opportunity to tune the order of fit on the angle dependent. Then he can tune the order of fit on the second on the on the mass concentration to yield a, a more accurate second viewer coefficient and he can also uh, uh, activate uh, an automated outlier detection uh, uh, technique that will automatically exclude data that are uh, not uh, uh, that contain outlier this can be appreciated here where you can see that the point in red um, that the point in red is a little bit far from the other point and has been automatically removed. Then if the user wants also to remove data that has not been, is not satisfactory and is not uh, uh, detected by the outlier removal tool, he can se uh, select the right exclusion mode, click on a point, and the point will be automatically removed. If the user realizes that the mass concentration was not properly uh, 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 obtained, and so one whole uh, angle series is unreliable, he can select the whole series removal tool. He can select the whole series, and the whole series is removed. 
So here is, uh, I'm concluding this part on showing how we uh, present data to the user and how we now allow user to add data treatments to uh, uh, when we, uh, uh, the, when the user performs experimental campaigns that are more complex. Now that we have seen how, um, how the data uh, the, uh, treatment is working in our instrument, let's see instead how data is acquired and is collected. A first way of uh, performing data treatment, uh, data, analysis, uh, data acquisition, is uh, um, uh, by means of the tile, for example, DLS size. If we click on DLS sizing, we can perform measurement on a more uh, 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 unstructured manner. So we can insert a sample, we can change the angle, and we can run measurement manually. The, the, the software here is guiding the user into in, uh, introducing the minimum amount of data required to store properly the data. So in this case, it is the experiment. So as soon as we type an experiment name, then the red balloon disappears, the play button to start the measurement uh, is activated, and the user can, if he wants, uh, customize the measurement by introduce a sample name, choose a material name, which is important, for example, for the scene plot, choose a for solvent, uh, uh, find the, the right, tune the right temperature at which the measurement can be done, choose the type of technique of measurement that he wants to do, and then choose a scattering angle at which the measurement has been uh, done. Once this is done, the play is, uh, uh, is button is pressed and the measurement is performed. We are not doing this for a uh, time constrained reason, but the, as measurements are done, they are accumulated on the left and new measurements can be uh, done and they are added to the same experiment. So this is the most manual way to do uh, measurement and is for quick inspection, is meant for quick inspection of samples for um, uh, data, uh, non-repetitive uh, uh, um, uh, measurement campaign. But instead there might be some situation in which the user wants to do uh, more, a more structure, wants to set up a more structural way of uh, uh, acquiring data. In this case, we have designed the ability to run protocols. So let's assume that an, a, 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 a very well-trained uh, um, technician trained to this technology wants to set up one of those protocols, he can enter the ma manage protocol style and we can create a protocol. Now, we uh, saw that in, in general, this kind of instruments suffer from the problem that creating protocol requires programming skills. So we decided to implement a visual language that um, uh, enables also people without programming skills to uh, uh, create pro protocols. Let's see how this goes. So let's create a new protocol. And you can see that the protocol is already following this uh, approach uh, to uh, highlight what is needed and guide the user uh, into creating the protocol by means of red balloon messages. The first message that we receive is please enter a protocol name. Once this is done, uh, we can uh, 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 we can see that each protocol entails several steps, and several steps can be dragged on the right pane to be programmed. So the software uh, LS Lab is telling us: Look, first of all, you have to introduce a sample, and when you introduce a sample, you have to decide which kind of measurement you have to do. Be, to do. The second message we receive: Please change uh, uh, the set uh, uh, scattering angle when we find the right step that corresponding to change scattering angle, then the software tells us, please enter the, right, the angle at which you want to measure. We say 90 degrees. And then we follow the further follow the instructions. So uh, the software tells change the sample ergonometer mode. So we drag the goniometer, uh, sample goniometer mode, and we say, yes, for these, this is an ergodic sample, so we don't need to use the sample goniometer. Then the next message is change the scattering geometry. So do we want to do 
uh, measurement with a 3D technology enabled or not, then we select this step. We drag it, drag it as simple as that to the protocol. And we are we seen oh, the, uh, the next instruction is to change the laser intensity. Indeed, we want to be able to tune the laser intensity to 100 kilohertz with the highest precision. And now clearly goes without saying that what is the last step that is missing is the start measurement. So we go, we drag the start measurement. We say we decide to measure for 30 seconds. The software is telling us that we have also to introduce the number of repetition. We want to do fire measurement. Now the, uh, the, the, the protocol is complete and you can see that the red messages have disappeared. So this is a protocol that we can save and we can execute. But as a matter of fact, as you can see, we created a protocol that is not so complex. It resembles uh, a bit a manual measurement. So let's assume that you want that instead to do something more complex that is an angle uh, dependent measurement. So as any programming language, text programming language, also this visual programming language has four loops. In this case, we choose a four, in each numeric value we drag these and we start to drag uh, steps inside and we start to drag all the steps that have to be re uh, repeated like the change intensity and the change angle then we are told look please provide a variable uh, uh, to uh, this for loop the variable to be used to indicate the quantity that we are looping over so we call this angle and we start to add the angles at which we want to measure 30 degrees 60 degrees 90 degrees and 120 degrees now clearly this uh, the the protocol is already syntactically complex uh, complete you can also appreciate that the for loop is collapsible so you, we can easily say see and visualize which steps are contained in the for loop but we are not yet using the variable that we have defined and we want to use the variable in this step and for this uh, task for this uh, goal we have to point to a user variable that we just defined and we do this by clicking this small uh, link button. We click this link button and now we can call this variable. And now we are able to loop on, uh, 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 on a set of angles that is 30, 60, 19, 120 degrees. And now once that we are done, we click click save. And we have a summary, a more compact visual summary of the um, of the pro protocol that we have created. Now, with this um, the demonstration of, of the protocols, the demonstration of the LS Lab software is complete, and I hand it over to um, Colleen Bretz for the conclusion of this seminar. Thank you, Andrea, and thank you everyone for watching this webinar with us today. For those viewing the recording on our website, I invite you to check the transcript of our Q&A session just below the recording of the webinar. Thanks everyone again and see you at our next event.